how to create a design like this, a radial design like that in Affinity Photo. Now, of course, it's virtually impossible to get exactly the same result each and every time. So I'm just going to show you the basic idea of how to create something like this. And let's start right at the beginning. Just go over here and I'm going to use a rectangle tool. So rectangle tool. Now just go up here with a fill. Make certain the fill is set to nothing. And you've got that little diagonal there. Just click that. That will set it to nothing. And the stroke I've set to 9.5 and black. And then just create that. Now what you can do, you can hold down the alter option key and duplicate these. Create multiple copies of it. And of course, another thing you could do is create another one, just as easy as well. But you can also click here and you can change the size. Also, make it slightly different. You can always go to pressure and then you can just go here and just drag that down and you get a variety of different lines and stroke widths. It's up to you if you want to create that. But I'm just going to go with just that, the same size, 15 or whatever. Hold down the ultra option key and duplicate that. And again, I can vary it. Let's just click there. Maybe make it slightly smaller. Maybe make it five and so on. And you can make obviously as complex as you want. But the reason I'm just doing this, I'm pushing them over each other. So not totally. But I want this. I want that. I want that. I want that and that. So with these rectangles, and of course, you could do hundreds of different shapes. It doesn't have to be just three. So then right click and group. So they're grouped. Now what I can do, I can go to layer and I can go down here to rasterize. And that rasterize turns into a pixel layer. I'm going to fill those now, but I want to fill the individual parts. Now I'll just go over here, so there, flood tool. So let's go to the flood tool. And now, really useful panel, swatches. That's in the window, window menu. Just select that, one of the colors, and just click. Now I've got 67. So you can vary it, maybe make it 80, make it 20. Depends what you want. And I'm going red, and I'm going to go with purple. Generally, I try and avoid having two, the colours next to each other that are like two reds. But that's... And also maybe go for... I've got a blue, so let's just go for a blue. Okay, so I've got that. And of course, you could go for all kinds. Also, what you can do... You don't have to, of course, just have that. You can always hold down the ultra option key and duplicate. And you could build up a more complex design, say like that. Maybe add another one, say three or four. Perfectly reasonable. So just drag that down there. And you can see now you've got a fairly complex design very quickly. Obviously all the same sort of colours, of course. But then you could, of course, also just go here, select them all. Maybe go with blend modes. And you can see then as you run through this, you'll get different colours. They're obviously the black. Sometimes you'll, you'll lose. But you can see you could create different colours that way. So I'm just going to go with normal. But with that, like that, I can then resize that. Also, again, right click. I can do that. Group. And then, again, layer. And down to rasterize. So it's all rasterized into one layer. Now I can apply the mirror filter. Now the mirror filter is slightly odd. Sometimes it will crop it. Sometimes it will create artifacts of other objects over. And it's sometimes it seems to be quite unpredictable why it does it. Sometimes it doesn't do it. So let's just go to filters and down to distort and mirror. There it is, mirror filter. So mirror filter. And then you'll notice what happens. It just cuts it like that. Sometimes it doesn't even look like anything's changed. But number of mirrors. So I'm just going to go for, say, four. You might decide to go for, say, eight. Something like that. Or you might go for four. Personally, I always generally stick to eight or four. So four. But then, like I say, it just creates that weird, where you got you can see you've got other objects over there. Now, I want all the colors still to be there. So I want that. And click Apply. Now you see what's happened. Let's just remove the swatches, don't need that anymore. Nor do I really need the layers, so just remove that. I can still get rid of that. Unfortunately, there's no layer. If I go layer, let's just go down here and rasterize and trim. It does trim it, but it still leaves this. As far as it's concerned, that is still part of the valid image. What I often do, I just go here and go for the selection. 
So rectangular marquee tool and just select that area. Edit, copy, edit, and paste. Oh, I've got a feather there. I don't want that, but it doesn't matter too much because it's not going to affect it. But it does mean that now window, I've got rid of the layers too quickly in haste. So just remove that layer and you can just delete it. So it's not there. Select and deselect. So you've got that design. And of course, what you can then do is you can do exactly the same. It also, you can resize it. So filters and repeat mirror. And again, you get that same effect. You might go for filters and distort and mirror. Just try other settings. So this time, maybe go for instead of two, three, go with four, maybe change the input and get something like that. And then resize that. And you can see, again, you get the same problem. You get these ones down the bottom. Just goes over that edge. And just reduce down and click apply. Not ideal again. Layer. And again, rasterize and trim. It gets it at least rid of most of it. Again, rectangle marquee tool. Select that area. Edit. Copy. Edit. And paste. It's a pity that feature does not have get rid of these by default. Don't know why. Maybe there's a way around that. I don't know. Select and deselect. And then you've got that. And then, of course, you can continue on with this. You can resize it again and so on. You can just keep building this up. Go to filter. And now, of course, what you can also do, just go to sort and mirror and just use that. Maybe just go for that instead. Probably better in many ways because then you don't get those weird artifacts. And or number two. Uh, let's just go with one. Click apply and so on. So filters repeat. Now, you'll notice what's happened there. It's gone over the edge. So just if you want, just resize that, then filters repeat mirror. Then you get that. It does seem odd, isn't it? Because obviously it's got the origin there. So again, you have to go back to filters and distort and mirror. It doesn't always work. Sometimes when you do the mirror, you just need to just drag that down. And you've got that. Click apply. Well, I've just reached the point where obviously now at this point, I'm just going to use filters and again, distort and mirror. And this time I am actually going to go for a lot more complex design. So obviously once you've got a fairly complex, that column, then you can go for more designs that way, something like that, and so on. Now, if you take it out too far, like you can get sort of see a frame like design. But you can always change input. Change origin position. Now you might, if you find you're not getting the result you want, you can always put it down like that. So just try that. I always do that, vary it. So distort and mirror. And again, number of mirrors. Just go there, five, eight. Just change the size. And input. And you can see as you do that, you'll get different results. Again, what you can do is hold down the ultra option key. And that will move smoothly around. So you can see you get a whole range of different mirror effects that way. And release. And you can change output even. Now, sometimes that has very little effect. You can see it just rotates around, which is not really of much use. So click OK. Now, once you've got this, of course, what you can then do is you can, if you want, use the Ultra Option key on the keyboard and just duplicate it. And then you can resize it. Just resize that design. Quite often I like to just do this, just put multiple layers, hold down the ultra option key again, drag that and then make that and you get even smaller. Obviously it gets tinier and tinier and tinier, but you can see you can then build this up and again repeat that to the point where you get down the bottom and you virtually can hardly see that. And of course at this point you might decide that central one, let's just go for say an ellipse and just select that and then go here Click the fill, colors, use the color picker. So color picker, and with that, just hover over there. So you can hover over there. You can see, I think I'll go for the purpley. Yeah, it's just good. Yeah, get it eventually. So click on that, and then you've got that. And you can, of course, drag that down. And you can see then you've got that filled. It'll be hard to actually fill it using the other one, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And now you've got that design, and there you have it. 
What you can then do is, of course, select them all, and then exactly the same as before, right click, group, and then layer, and down to rasterize. Turn it all into a pixel layer, and then you've got your design. But also what you can do, you can always, of course, if you want to add some 3D effects, etc., go to effects, and you can always go to Bevel and Boss. You've got that sort of effect, maybe 3D, and then maybe go for outer shadow as well. That's another option. Set radius, intensity, and so on. And close. And of course, you can duplicate that design. Maybe use it as a great source for pattern designs as well. So, I mean, it's perfect reasonable pattern. But you can also go for maybe, yeah, just go again to the rectangular marquee tool. You can select an area, say this area. Now, this is not obviously perfectly in the center, but I'd say it's about there. Like that. You can always then go to layer and you can go to new pattern layer from selection. Just that selection there, you've got that layer selected, new pattern layer from selection, and then you've got that. It's a very, very complex design, which of course then you can go with the move tool and then you can resize that and you can see you can move it around, rotate it, and so on. And once you've got that, you can then rasterize that as well. So layer and rasterize and that will just turn it into a solid pixel layer which of course you can then combine with other elements maybe use as background maybe use as overlays maybe as wallpaper carpets poster designs all those kind of things hope you found this of interest any questions please let me know in the comments below a like or dislike always appreciate it and also if you've got any comments or thoughts about things like the mirror and how you can restrict those other artifacts that appear. Maybe there is no, there's no way of stopping those. I don't know. I've done this quite a few times. Never seemed to work out exact method of stopping those appearing sometimes and then other times not. Also the cropping as well, that that might be an issue as well. So make sure you always apply it within the center if you want to avoid some cropping that may or may not happen occasionally. Bye.